Regarding quality four, mm -hmm. what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth does not and cannot compromise even for the sake of peace look like in my personal life? Well, we could, look, we could look at it in a number of ways here in our personal life because I feel when we ask this question about personal life, we need to look at our life generally, human, humanity's life on earth as well, you know, because mm -hmm. it, we see all sorts of examples both in our personal lives and also in humanity and the way in which nations operate with each other with this particular principle. Yeah. If we understand at the soul level that every time I compromise truth, I am going to result in more harm. I am going to create more harm to myself and others in my environment. Then there is a number of things that I would refuse to do. One of these things is I would refuse, once I know the truth on a certain subject and I know for certain it's God's truth and that's in my soul, I know that truth in my soul, I would no longer try to make it easier for everyone else to understand that. Mm. I would just state what the truth is. I wouldn't try to embellish it, modify it for public opinion, you know, try to make it sound better than it really is, any of those things. I would just present it as it is from a state of peace. So I wouldn't be angry with the world when I present it. I wouldn't be demanding of the world that the world accept it. I wouldn't be trying to force the world into some kind of change. I would just present the truth and let the world make its own choices. Anyone else other than myself make its own choices about that presentation of truth. So if we look at that in a relationship, Maybe okay. first. Yep. So what that means, if I know a truth and I know that you don't believe it and we're in a relationship with each other, then what I will have to do is I would still present that truth, but I'd do it in a peaceful manner. I'd do it in harmony with love. I would do it without expectation or demand that you conform to it. I would do it without trying to manipulate you or control you subversively or, or uh, overtly um, in any manner. I would always respect your and honour your will about what you do, but I would still stay firm about the truth. Yeah. That's what I would do personally. And so conversely, and also because of what we know from quality number three, that divine love and divine truth are always in harmony. Mm -hmm. If I'm presenting a truth and I'm doing the opposite of those things that you just outlined, mm -hmm. then I have to even question if I know the truth. I don't know it. The reality is I don't know it. If I'm presenting a truth at this point in time and, and presenting it in a, in a way that's angry and raged and all these other things, then I don't really know it yet because yeah. there's other aspects of it that I've yet to discover. And so, for example, um, we know of someone who comes to our seminars who was in a, se a different seminar, a work training seminar, and the person presenting was... Um, presenting some things that they felt were in disharmony with divine truth. Mm -hmm. And they felt that they needed to stay firm for truth mm -hmm. and not compromise, but in effect they um, hijacked the entire seminar mm -hmm. and started arguing with the, um, mm -hmm. with the presenter. Yes, which is not what you would do if you were in harmony with divine truth. Yes, so you, what would the lack of compromise be in that situation? Well, for a start, a person who's gone to a seminar that something, where something else is being presented is an invited guest of the people that are present. And in this case, I think he was invited guest of the government, in fact, <laughs> <laughs> to help him get a job. Yeah. So, so he's an invited guest. As a guest, he has no right to try and hijack the seminar itself. He's allowed to be fixed and immovable on his own truth. And he would be peaceful about that. He wouldn't feel enraged that somebody is trying to tell him something that's different to what he believes. He would feel calm. He would feel okay. He'd say, no worries, I can hear that. He would sit there in silence the entire seminar and see anything that came from it as a gift at least to help him understand that he's now a bit more loving than he perhaps was before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he might not absorb anything that's been said because he disagrees with it all. He would sit there calmly without having to speak up and become overt about it. If it was his own seminar, 
That's different. If it was something that he was presenting, that he had paid for, that he had bought the seats for, that he had invited other guests to come along, now he can speak about what he feels in but that environment. Even in that environment, if he felt the need to be aggressive or demanding of people... Then he'd be out of harmony with truth itself. With love and, with and love. therefore with truth. Of, yes. of course. Yeah. So, so a person who's truly um, in harmony with these principles would be able to sit through hours, if not days, weeks or even months of unloving behaviour going on around him without compromising his own principles in his personal interactions, but without demanding that other people agree with him. He would also not um, avoid disagreement when he was asked, what's your personal opinion? He would tell a personal opinion. And when somebody gets angry with him, he would not get angry in return. Mm. He would always be peaceful himself, even though other people are not peaceful. And if other people want him to compromise in order to have peace, he wouldn't do that either. He would stay firm, but he would always be peaceful. Yeah. So the, a person who truly understands these principles would not go and hijack somebody else's seminar, for example, mm -hmm. would not go and hijack some kind of course or workshop, would not hijack what's going on even in people's day-to-day -day life. He, he would understand that he's allowed to have his own personal opinion and once it's truth, once it's God's truth, he will know it to be true. Mm -hmm. Once he knows it to be true, he will act in harmony with love. If he really knows it to be true, he will act in harmony with love and he will not compromise even when threatened or abused or mm -hmm. any other thing because he won't compromise love yeah. when he does that when, that, when somebody does that with him. He will always be loving in the circumstance and situation. And if he's not, he would realise, wow, there's still some more truth I have to accept. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another example. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, so I'm a vegan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and say I'm invited to a family function, mm -hmm. which is not likely to happen to me anytime soon, but hypothetically speaking. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm there and um, somebody's serving something that has some cheese in it and someone a relative of mine says look just eat it because otherwise your grandmother will notice and she'll be upset and what's it going to hurt you just to eat this thing um, just for the sake of peace today please mm. do this yeah it's loving <laughs> and it's not yeah it would be compromising for the sake of peace yeah. truth is of itself always truth Whenever you compromise it, things can only get worse. Mm -hmm. And so by, by, by doing something that compromises the truth, what you're in this example doing is you're harming yourself again through the ingestion of something that you know is out of harmony with love. So that's number one. Yeah. Secondly, you're actually harming your grandma who made it because you're not allowing her to have her confrontation of why she made something that was out of harmony with love in the first place. Or her unloving investment in me eating that thing. Of course. Yeah. That, that's a third thing. Why does she demand yeah. that, you, that you eat what she wants? Mm. That's not love either. Mm. So th there are a number of loving issues that this would force, you, force out into the open if you didn't move. But if you compromise, none of these issues will get raised. You'll have compromised yourself. So in other words, you've done something that's unloving, which will harm your own body, your own relationship with God, your own spiritual feelings about yourself and your own spirit body all will be harmed. Secondly, the person who expects you to eat it will be harmed because they will see that compromise is love and mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -hmm. Compromise is not love. Compromise, in fact, is very unloving. And thirdly, the person who created the, the concoction that you <laughs> meant to eat, that's out of harmony with love, wouldn't ever understand that, that what they've created has unloving parts to it they need to have a look at if they ever want to come into harmony with God's truths of the universe. Mm. So, so by, by compromising, you're actually causing more negative effects. When you stand firm, so you can just kindly stand firm, no, I'm just not going to eat that. Uh, there, there's no way I can eat that. Mm -hmm. And when somebody asks you why, you tell them why. And when somebody gets upset about that, you let them be upset about that. Yeah. And you don't get upset in return. And if somebody's so upset that, you're, that, that they're attacking you, you leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to do all of that. Yeah. 
then you have been peaceful yourself, and, but also immovable and not compromising for the sake of peace. Yeah. And this is what divine truth does. God doesn't compromise God's truth for the sake of peace. If I can bring up some more global examples yes. where this has happened in history. In the First World War, um, the outcome, obviously, we know the First World War was that, that the German uh, attack failed mm -hmm. and therefore, you know, a peace was settled, as the saying goes, in which many compromises about God's laws were, were made, compromises of love and compromises of truth. Now, many of those compromises affect affected the German people as a result. There was a lot of rage in the rest of the people who thought that the German race created the war. And as a result of this rage, they imposed many unloving and therefore untruthful uh, restrictions upon the German population. Now, of course, this bred feelings within the population of unfairness or a lack of um, equality. Mm -hmm. As this unfairness and lack of equality grew, eventually it laid the foundation for the political rise of someone like Hitler, mm -hmm. which eventually created the Second World War. And this is the problem with compromise on a national and international basis. What it does is it actually creates future conflicts down the track because one or both parties generally involved in a compromise are not happy. Yeah. The only way for two parties to become happy is for two parties to accept God's truths about a particular matter. That's the only way that two of you can become happy at any, any, with anything. That applies in a relationship. It also applies in a worldwide international incident. Mm. If we, you wanted to bring up a relationship or? A uh, worldwide. A world yeah. run? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's to do with the truth and reconciliation trials in South Africa. Yes. And so I'm not intimately aware with uh, all of the laws all involved. of the, every, the workings of those trials. Yeah. But um, from my rudimentary knowledge, I believe it was based on the idea that truth needed to be told. Mm -hmm. So much had happened under the apartheid uh, regime. regime. Which was unfair and unloving. Yes. That, um, that the idea was that people in local communities would come together and the truth would be told mm -hmm. about what happened. Mm -hmm. And then some kind of reconciliation or um, uh, punishment uh, or uh, that it would be decided upon in that forum. Didn't they decide that there would be no punishment? I'm not sure if mm. that was the... Uh, Similar to the situation in Lebanon where well, they that... decided after the war that, uh, that everyone had done so many bad things that everyone would get away with everything. Actually, at <laughs> and the that end was of, the compromise. At the end of, yeah, at the end of the 20 years of war, uh, yeah. they And then decided... we had the converse thing happening with regard to the end of the Second World War when the Nazis were taking the trial in the Nuremberg trials and, and, and or the Nuremberg trials and, and then... And then that went on for years and years and years afterwards, for 20, 30, 40 years even afterwards yeah. they were still proceeding. Yeah. So I suppose I'm talking about this relationship between truth and peace mm -hmm. and also when we strive for truth but we may not necessarily want God's truth in terms of what should happen mm. after we speak the truth. What do you feel about all of that? Well, I feel it's an oxymoron to say we're striving for truth but not willing to accept God's truth because the, the reality is that the only truths in the universe are God's truths. <laughs> They're the only truths. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else is personal opinion subject to variation. God's truths are fixed and immovable, not subject to variation. Yeah. Right? So the only thing that's worth attaining is God's truths on any issue. We do this automatically with many physical things, as I've pointed out. So when it comes to the truth about how a physical law works, we want to find it. Mm -hmm. We want to know how gravity works. We want to know how aerodynamics works. We, 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 we spend years of research <laughs> finding out such things. But when it comes to issues or laws surrounding love and laws surrounding how the human soul works, we ignore almost them all. Mm. And this is our problem. We can't expect to continue ignoring truths and 
and, and therefore have any positive results afterwards. Mm -hmm. Whenever we ignore God's truth, there will always be negative results. Now, many people on earth have ideas of compromise. They believe that compromise works. Now, there's been experiments in compromise, just as there has been experiments in no compromise. And basically, none of the experiments have worked in either direction. Mm. And the main reason why is this, because none of them are true. None of the experiments that have been carried out in these regards are true. When there was no compromise, there was no factoring in of repentance, there was no desire to achieve repentance, which are all parts of the truths of God's laws. Yeah. And as a result, there's an, ignore, an ignorance of the emotional truths of God's laws. In other words, we're focused on discovering the physical ones, mm -hmm. but we're not focused on discovering the spiritual and emotional ones. If we were focused on the spiritual and emotional truths of God's laws and we applied all of them in these situations, every one of them would now be resolved completely. Mm. Every single one of them. It, it is the compromise of God's truths with regard to these particular events mm. that cause further trauma and pain in any or all of the people involved. Mm. And this is what we need to understand. Whenever we compromise God's truths, we're not creating peace. We're creating a fictitious state in which the emotions of the people involved with these particular events are never released and therefore fester like an open wound to come out at some future time. Mm -hmm. And you see this happening globally, in nations themselves, in religious organisations and in personal relationships. You see the same principle occurring right across the board. Yeah. In personal relationships, there's this common viewpoint that if I compromise my personal viewpoint in order to have some more peace, our marriage will last longer. But it doesn't. All that happens is I know I've compromised and I'm upset about that. You know that I haven't really come to your opinion at all. I've just made a compromise that's not real and you're upset about that. Yeah. And in the end, at, at some point in the future, it will all come bursting out in some other way. If we both had a goal to conform to God's truth and therefore conform to God's love with regard to the subject, now both of us will need to compromise. But we're not compromising God's truth. We are working from our place of untruth to God's truth. In other words, we're getting to the point where we decide we're going to honour God's truth only, and we're going to realise that both of us have to change in order to accept that truth. Cool, yeah. Now we have the true op opportunity for peace mm. in the relationship, in a nation, in religions, and in the entire world internationally, when we are all willing to accept what is the actual truth. We have all accepted the actual truth about gravity. We've all accepted the actual truth about aerodynamics, it's time we all started to accept the actual truth about love. Yeah. <laughs> but we are very resistive to that, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, so uh, perhaps to finish off, I'll just read out some of the notes that you've written here of what it would mean if I personally had this truth, mm. this soul-based understanding of sure, this truth. Sure, sure. So, um, I would refuse to compromise divine truth in my day-to-day -day life even for the sake of peace or expedience, which you've covered. Yep. Even if I seem destined to lose something, I yes. never compromise truth, personal or God's. And this is an important point. A lot of people realise that when they stay immovable, there's, a, there's usually the potential for other people to attack them. So this is something that we get quite frequently. You know, the media attacks us when we're unmovable on a certain issue. Other people attack us when we're unmovable on a certain issue. And the majority of people on the planet have learnt that under those circumstances, they're always going to lose something. And so what they do is they try to avoid losing it mm. by compromise. But in the end, it's always going to work out worse for them and particularly worse for their soul, but also worse for every single person around them if they do. So it's very important to not compromise on these issues. It works out worse for the people around them because the people around them don't get to see what the problem is. Yeah. All they finish up doing is believing that they are right when they're not right. Mm. And, uh, and this is a big problem that we face on the planet. 
If we don't stand up for truth and stay in peace while we're doing it, the people who are in error don't get to see their error. Yeah, and I suppose I can think of a very personal example again. And um, I mentioned, I made a joke about my family earlier, but I suppose that when you and I formed a relationship, when we started our relationship, my family protested quite a lot and they resorted to being quite aggressive and abusive mm. towards both of us verbally mm -hmm. and emotionally and trying to manipulate me. And so I reached a point eventually where I felt like I couldn't compromise the truth that that was unloving mm -hmm. and that that was unjust actually mm -hmm. towards the both of us. And I understand what you're saying that if I, ha the expectation from my family was that I should compromise mm. and just overlook what had happened in the past and move on. Mm. Uh, and I can see now that if I had have done that, I would have allowed them to feel that that was okay with me, what had happened. Mm. But this, and I realised that if I wasn't going to compromise, I would lose them from my life. Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, I already felt that I had lost them mm -hmm. because this um, love had been broken. Broken. Already. Yeah. And this is the thing is often what we're trying to save when we compromise has already been lost. Mm. And the compromise doesn't help it at all. No, it just prolongs the pain, doesn't it? And well, it's a way to avoid pain mm. because we don't come to a full recollection or a full acknowledgement of what we've lost. Yeah. You know, by compromising, uh, some kind of semblance of a relationship would have been maintained, but you would have always felt like it wasn't loving anymore. Mm. So you would, all, you would have still lost it. And, and the only thing you would have been avoiding would have been your own pain. Yes. with regard to the acknowledgement of the loss. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is the problem with compromise that causes us to believe that, uh, that things are better when they are still the same as they've always been. Mm. Mm. And, and this is not a good way to get more and more truth from God, no. to believe, to stay where they're always the same. Yeah. We need to get things better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I continue with the sure. list. Um, <coughs> so when I have a soul-based understanding of this, I'm not afraid of giving up my addictions or comforts so that I can get closer to God. Exactly. Like quite, quite often what we want to do is we want God to compromise for the sake of God's truth. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of like the flip side of this is that divine truth will never compromise even for the sake of peace. What we want to have happen is, God, you compromise because I don't want to give up my addictions. Yeah. You compromise. I don't want to give up my sadness. You compromise. I don't want to give up my fear. You compromise. I want to be angry when I can be angry, you know. And we want God to compromise on all of these issues. If we truly had a soul-based understanding of this particular divine, quality of divine truth, we would go, I realise that I can't ask God to compromise on any of these issues. If I want to be closer to God, I'm the one that's going to have to do something about my addiction, my fear, my anger my, and my sadness. Mm. I'm the one that's going to have to choose to feel it all. And so you wouldn't avoid all the feelings so much and you wouldn't be there in a great big rage with God in rebellion saying, how dare you make me go through all of this because you realise that it's all for the sake of loving you that God's asking you to go through this. He's not even forcing you. He's asking you to go <laughs> through it. But he's saying to you, I'm not going to be able to have a closer relationship with you unless you do it. Yeah. And, and, and most people on earth don't like that. They want a closer relationship with God. They want all the benefits of a relationship with God without having to get rid of all the things out of harmony with truth yeah. in their relationship with God. So that's if we truly felt this quality of divine truth in our soul that God's truth isn't going to compromise, even for the sake of peace, then we wouldn't expect God to, say, to, to give us divine love while we're purposefully doing a heap of things out of outer harmony with love and truth. Yeah. We wouldn't expect God to do that. Yeah. We would acknowledge that. And we wouldn't be even in a rage with God about that because we'd understand yeah, God's just wanting me to have real changes, not mm. changes that are just figments of my imagination or manufactured because of my intellect, but real soul-based changes. That's what God wants me to do. So I wouldn't be complaining to God about that. No. Okay. Mm. I, I refuse to conform to other people's addictions for the sake of peace or personal gain. Mm. 
A lot of times when we conform to other people's addictions, it's for the sake of personal gain. In other words, we give them something in order to get something from them. And the reality is a lot of times we're prepared to give them what they, their addiction demands in order to get what our addiction demands. Mm -hmm. And that's what creates codependence, but it's also what creates a lot of badness on the planet, this, this exchange of addictive behaviour. If we really understood this quality of divine truth and we had some truth in our heart, what we would do instead of doing that is go, okay, even if I'm going to personally seemingly gain, and it's not a real gain because it's not real, mm -hmm. but it's a seeming gain. If I'm going to personally seemingly gain from compromise, then I've got to, uh, then I've got to say to myself, okay, this is not something God would do. So it's not real gain. And it also is harming myself and the other person. Mm. And, and we need to see it as such. And if we understood this principle of divine truth, we would see compromise of truth as a harmful thing, not as something that supports our life, but rather something that degrades it. Yeah. That's how we'd see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I refuse to soften the truth in order to make the truth more acceptable to others. Yes, this okay. is about making the truth more tasty, I call it, or yeah. making it more palatable or making it so that more people will listen to it. You know, the reality is the unadulterated truth as God presents it is the only way to present it. The reason why, and this is why God is immovable in the way God presents the truth even. God's immovable because God knows that every time you try to embellish it, Every time you try to make it nice, every time you try to make it easy to take, it ends up with disaster in, in, the, in well, the It's track. a compromise of it's the truth. It's always a compromise yeah. of the truth. And it ends up in disaster every time. And, uh, and in fact, God's laws are attempting to correct you from doing such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. the sad, yeah. that's the sad thing. Every time we think we're embellishing it, God's laws are going, stop embellishing it. You know, <laughs> stop embellishing it. And we're going, I want to embellish it because, and, and the because is always because we have some kind of thing we want in return for the embellishment. We want a result. We want people to change or there's always something that we want. Mm -hmm. if we're, the beauty of not compromising is that we also then have to deal with internally all the things we want through the compromise. Yeah. We have to feel that we don't have them or don't, didn't get them. And we have to feel about it. If we're truly at the soul level, we would be feeling about it. Yeah. And this is great because it releases things within us if we do that. And so it's a powerful thing to not allow the compromise, even if you desperately want it, <laughs> and, and to then feel about the results of the lack of compromise inside of yourself. What, what, you know, feel the attack, feel the abuse, feel, feel all those things you're avoiding. There are things you're avoiding. Yeah. Or feel the fact that you didn't get what you wanted. Yeah. Feel the fact that nothing happened the way you'd like. You know? yeah. Feel those things. Yeah. And in the end, I think when you receive this um, soul-based understanding of this truth, you do feel that the truth can't be made more tasty or of interesting course. or appealing. How can God's truth be made more appealing than God's already made it? Yes. You're basically saying by embellishing it, you're basically saying to God, you know, you didn't make it good enough. I'm better than you. <laughs> I can make it better. Yeah. That's really what you're saying. And the arrogance of that position is so extreme that it's no wonder that there's laws that correct it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next point we have when we have a soul-based understanding of the fact that divine truth does not compromise is that I act in harmony with divine truth at all times even when I'm afraid or terrified. Yes. The main reason why we compromise in any situation is because of fear or ter being terrified. We are afraid that something will occur that we do not wish to occur. Now, fear is something that opposes love and truth. When a person's afraid, they are always generally re rejecting truth. And also, love can never be perfected while fear exists. Mm. So, so whenever we act in compromise, we're acting upon our fears. And whenever we act upon our fears, we're not understanding that we're actually preventing our personal growth in truth and love by acting upon our fears. 
Instead, what we need to do is choose to feel our fears, mm -hmm. to let them go, experience them and let them go. Then we have the ability to absorb more truth and also to perfect our love. So, so compromise for the sake of, of supporting fear or avoiding fear is a, is a very, very dangerous road. And it's a, uh, it's a false peace that we attain through doing that. Well, more often than not, we don't even obtain peace yeah. through it. What we obtain is more oppression. You look at almost every society that is engaged in this fear-based process, they end up with more oppression, mm. more damage, more attack, not less. Yeah. And, you know, it's only societies that stand up to truth with truth in harmony with God's love that actually result in less of those things. Yeah. And, and this is something that we haven't learnt yet. Most people on the planet haven't learnt yet. They still think that they can compromise for fear sake and actually have a good outcome. Yeah. All of God's laws are actually saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> you're going to have a bad outcome doing this because you're honouring fear. And, and if you look at a lot of the things that are happening on around the earth today, it's because we honour fear so much that we can't love anymore. We can't speak in harmony of truth anymore. We honour fear so much that the reality can't be exposed. And as a result, most of us end up with a lot of pain and suffering. Mm. Mm. Okay, this next one's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm not always attempting to get a common intellectual ground with people in rage or hatred. Yes, now this is a very important thing to understand about compromise. Mm -hmm. Persons that are enraged or in hatred or resentment are attacking you. They are not peaceful. Mm -hmm. They ha need to have their rage and hatred exposed as an unloving thing within themselves. If you compromise when they are enraged or in hatred, you're supporting their rage and hatred. You're supporting their ability to control you mm -hmm by doing what they wish to do when they're enraged or in hatred. Mm -hmm. To do such a thing means that not only are you compromising yourself and God's truths, but you're actually helping them become even worse a person than they currently are. And so you, you are actually now responsible partially for aiding and assisting them in their enraged or angry behaviour. Yeah. And this is very out of harmony with love and therefore out of harmony with divine truth. And so essentially you're saying any time we try to even reason and converse and uh, have a really rageful, angry person see our point of view, we're actually compromising? Is that what you mean? No, I'm saying if you have to compromise in order to have their rage reduced, then you are not in harmony with God's truth. Okay, thank you. If you're willing to just sit there and talk, talk to them, talk them through their rage, and eventually they come to see reason and they calm down, well, that's different. Mm -hmm. you, but you would not embellish or compromise God's truth in order to do so. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Okay, mm -hmm. next one. I love all people enough to say truth, even if it means losing their friendship or approval. Yes, and this is a very important aspect to understand about this part of God's truth. The reason why God's truth doesn't compromise is because God's truth loves. Yeah. And what, what I mean by that is that the, God knows that when we discover more divine truth, remember, divine truth is universal truth. It's the absolute truth of the universe. When we discover more of it, we're going to have a happier existence. We're going to have more joy. We're going to have more satisfaction in life. We're going to have more growth. Therefore, there is only positive results of knowing more truth. Mm -hmm. Now, God's truth knows that. And so this is one reason why it doesn't compromise. Because it knows that if it compromises, it compromises all of those things. It compromises joy, peace, real peace I'm talking about, not the fake one. And it, and it compromises the person, God, every, everything that is compromised through the compromise of truth. Mm. Their ability to grow, their ability to change, their ability to become more loving is all compromised. And if we understood that, 
we would actually see telling the truth as an act of love. We wouldn't see it as something to avoid. We would see it as something we always need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, last one. I never feel anything related to truth or love is too hard or time consuming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What I see a lot of people doing is they almost go like, I haven't got the time right now to be loving. I just got to get this thing over and done with. Yeah. And they don't understand in that place that every time they compromise and to compromise is against this process of divine truth. It's against one of the qualities of divine truth. Every time we compromise, we're basically saying that it's going to take longer. Because all of God's laws are constructed mm. to make it go as short as possible, to be as economical as possible, to make yes. everything happen as quickly as possible. Yeah. And every time I compromise, I'm compromising God's law's ability to do that. Yeah. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to make everything longer. I'm going to make everything worse. Yeah. I'm going to have to have spend more time <laughs> <laughs> rather than less yeah. on a particular thing. And so I see a lot of people thinking that they're compromising for the sake of experience and time. And in the end, they finish up spending five times, 10 times, 15 times more time than what they would have spent if they had lived in harmony with truth. Yeah, yeah. that's lovely. Yeah, mm. really wonderful things mm. about that, yeah. that quality, isn't it? Yeah. So th this quality number four, I feel, is a pretty important quality, understanding that God's truth, once you know it, it never compromises. Understand that's very, very different to personal truth. In my opinion, my own personal truth, I always need to compromise mm -hmm. all the time. I, in my personal life, I'm always compromising because I know that there's things I don't know. And on those things I don't know, I need to be willing to compromise very rapidly if yes. I'm going to receive God's truth because it's God's truth that is the thing that won't compromise. Yeah. And unless I'm willing to change... And, and develop, then and, and therefore compromise my own truth, I'm never going to grow towards God's. Mm. So understand that this quality is about God's truth, not about your own. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> and, and in fact, all of these qualities are about God's truth, about not, yes. not necessarily yeah. your own. It's only when you bring your truth into harmony with God's truth that you will then not compromise yourself on that particular truth. And in fact, this whole discussion that we're having today, this series of questions, gives us a lot of clues as to whether our personal truth is anywhere in the ballpark of God's truth. Exactly. And so if we find that what we believe to be true me is not matching up with these other qualities, yep. then we already know, hey, maybe I need to We're way, way out of God's truth. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, so, so far we've done those four qualities, mm -hmm. right? So we've done the first quality, which is God's truth is infinite. So every time I think, God's, that every time I think truth is finite... I know everything about this. I know everything about something. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Only God knows everything about everything. Yeah. We will come to know more about every subject and there are certain things that will solidify, mm -hmm. certainly. But uh, if we believe that it's not infinite, then, then you know, we have no idea what God's truth really is. Mm -hmm. If we believe that it's going to move, if we believe that we can move it around, push it around, manipulate yeah. it, it's not true. Yeah. If we believe that it's out, we can do it out of harmony with love, not true. If we believe we can compromise, not true. Mm. And if that's what we're doing, compromising, being out of harmony with love, you know, trying to manipulate or move things around, negotiate with God. Changing our own. Uh, or we believe it's all fine out, then we know we're a long way away from where God's truth is as in terms of its qualities. Yeah. Yeah. Our truth, God's truth, like day and night. Yeah. <laughs> night and day, probably night, our truth, <laughs> yeah. day, God's truth. And that's the beauty of truth is it exposes everything. God's truth exposes everything. Our truth doesn't. Our truth wants to keep us staying and keep us where we are, no change. That's part of these qualities. So, so, so far we've discussed four. We'll try to discuss another three in this session. Yeah. Um, but um, we need to understand already that if, we, if we've just used those four qualities alone, you could see and analysed your own personal life and your own personal belief systems with those four qualities. You could see you could throw out half of what you believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you were humble, you'd throw it all out. But often we're not humble, so we hold on to it, right? Yeah. But if we're truly humble within, in the light of these particular qualities, we'd throw out half of what we believe automatically. Yeah. 
and we haven't even we've only got to quality number four. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't discussed the others. We have the other ten that we've still got to go eventually. Yeah, and I feel it's important for people to see that that this is a lot of accepting these particular things is about humility, mm. and that's a different discussion in itself. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Okay.